Hello and welcome to this episode of Watercolour Walkthrough where I'll be looking at this image of Venice. It's a long one but I will be doing a time lapse version of it later on although this one is real time. So enjoy the video. Okay this is the equipment that I'm more than likely going to be using. These are my white knights watercolour paints. I've also got some uh, white watercolour, Chinese white, uh, just in case I want to tint the colours. I may not use that. Uh, and my brushes, a wash brush and a couple of uh, pointed uh, quills for detailing and other various bits and obviously I'm going to draw it out first so I'll need a pencil I may also need a rubber so that's everything apart from the water there so let's get on with it for the drawing section of this painting I'm going to do do it in time lapse uh, very slightly as you can see I've just used a ruler for that uh, section of the building that's the only time I use a ruler within this uh, drawing and uh, it, it is important to get that correct I'm just putting some steps in there and I'm looking for the halfway point between that building because buildings in Venice seem to be blocked off into sections uh, as you'll see from lots of paintings uh, they look like cake with uh, little segments on them. I'm, I'm now in the um, background buildings and if if you notice when I'm uh, doing the vertical lines I'm going quite long. Now they won't go that long the buildings but that's to help me when I put the uh, reflections in. I'm now onto a tower that I slightly alter off camera uh, putting bits of the rest of the background buildings in it's not that difficult to the only thing you've got to get right on this is the perspective so we're now looking at the one of the gondolas the spree gondolas in this painting uh, we've got a person sat there in the background and we've got the I don't know what do they call them gondola guys I don't know um, you got your bloke uh, pushing the boat round anyway and then his, his, his rudder or whatever that is so that's your first one um, in uh, Venice you'll see these um, red and white striped things all the way around and that there is your second gondola I didn't know whether to do that or not because it, it things that are outside can uh, take your eye away so I'm putting the the water lining on the on the uh, buildings now and uh, the next bit uh, little fiddly bits of detail really you don't really need to go into that much detail because you could paint all these things in so now So we're getting the parts of uh, the foreground building in and this will have some detail but because I'm doing the painting in a fairly loose way I'm not going to be going into hyper detail with this. I just want to know where the windows are going to be. And back to the background buildings. Now literally they, they're just tiny little squares or even just lines. For the windows but there are a lot of them but it really is up to you when you're doing your painting how many of these you put in and some people don't even put the uh, windows in they paint them in as they go along but I'm just putting them there so I've got a visual reference of where they ought to be going 
there's a little boat there and they have jetties all the way around uh, these buildings with bits of wood sticking up out of the water so that's another feature of uh, Venice that you'll see a lot and uh, getting some more windows in I'll be putting some more little bits of jetty detail there and um, yeah it's just getting those little bits of detail that help me through the painting in now really and uh, again it's it's just repetition this lots of uh, windows and don't try to absolutely measure everything out exactly it's a rough idea of what we're doing so those lines I did earlier help me put where the uh, where the reflection is and the ear now is our third boat and this has been moved from the original uh, painting it, I moved it away because from the other boat and that is roughly it right we're ready for doing the painting and I'm going to try and put a goldy yellow background in the sky and all the way through the uh, rest of the painting so it keys it all together and that's a really good thing to do with your painting uh, you start with very large brushes but very washy paint so that you can get a, an overall paint uh, overall painting throughout the entirety of the painting and that will key all the painting together as one painting so you more often than not in in watercolor paintings when it's a landscape start with the farthest thing away from you which is going to be the sky now we only see a certain amount of that sky but that doesn't mean to say that sky isn't there where that building is so i'm going to put some more in So obviously there's going to be some of the sky colour in the reflection in the water. Now this is just an undertonal painting and I'll put some blue in in a bit because obviously wa the water it's not yellow. But any colour that you put in the sky you put in the reflection. And there will be reflected colour uh, in all of the buildings as I'm doing now as you can see. And this is a good thing to do because it adds extra value to your painting and uh, helps create some really nice effects. I'm pulling out some of the sky now uh, so I can make a cloud. Using the trusty tissue paper that I, I've wet the painting uh, with water. I'm blotting it out and it pulls out some of that paint that will start to make the beginnings of uh, a cloud and this is a good uh, thing to have a go at because it creates some really nice cloud uh, effects and I'm, I'm taking bits out of the water as well uh, so that you've got a variation in um, values in your colour in the actual painting so I'll blot out here and there but again this is only the undertonal painting so we'll be moving on to a, the colour in a second or two as you can see I've, I'm moving now on to the actual colour of the sky which is blue so it, it's doing exactly the same we're going to uh, do a lot of the area in blue but first of all we're concentrating on the sky so it's light enough this blue to show a little bit of the yellow that we put on underneath it and that will give a, a like an afterglow in the sky but I am going to now add a slightly darker blue into the mixture of the wet paint so it can uh, the sky uh, 
doesn't have one consistent colour. It it can variate quite a lot. And once I'm happy with the uh, where the sky is going to be, I'll uh, I'll start making alterations to it. Uh, one thing I'm aware of at this moment in time is is that it's pooling a lot of water uh, in the centre. But I'm going to deal with that in a short while. So uh, that's where the tower, uh, the blotting comes in. You can get rid of that, and that will then create the a uh, nice cloud effect but because it's got that yellow in the background the, the clouds then have a glow uh, which it comes off the sun which really is nice and that's how I like to do my clouds with a yellow undertone and then a, a darker blue over the top and then pull the rest of the colour out with a blotting so sky finished we'll need to do the reflective uh, surface of the water uh, continuing on with the uh, theme that we've had before of putting the colour over the yellow now this this one's the blue obviously that that will uh, put the main colour for the water in that area and uh, as I've already made fairly clear the um, painting to have some consistency all the way through it will have a bit of every colour in every area but at the moment I'm just getting a piece of um, tissue paper and I'm dragging the wet paint across because generally speaking it's good to get the colour going across and then any shadows that come down or reflections they go vertical so just it's dried a little bit the sky so i'm putting just a, a dab more of blue into it because obviously watercolor as it's drying it gets a little bit lighter and i just wanted a little bit more dark area so we're moving on to getting areas of the blue into the uh, foreground building and that will be mainly shaded areas because the, the blue will kind of uh, create shade and later on we'll see how we can create the lighter areas. If you notice at this stage in the painting, I'm not painting in a particularly tight manner with lots of high detail. It's about blocking in areas of colour at this stage. Although I have come down in size with the uh, with the brush, it's still fairly large, loose washes that I'm doing with the. Uh, paint and I'm doing a, a bit of a platform at the moment uh, that has a set of steps where obviously the gondolas must um, that's where they launch from or whatever uh, that area is fairly dark so I, I'm getting some areas of reflection in there as well so it's it's just blocking out quite a bit of the area so I've got a rough idea of where I'm painting for a building that's facing away from the sun i.e. either it's in the dark it's a fairly light building but uh, we're going to move on to do the uh, reflection of the boat now and one of the tricks with this particular painting is keeping the blocking in of colours fairly basic. You don't want to be adding a new colour for this and a new colour for that. Just just try and keep the blocking it in section uh, nice and simple. Not too many colours. 
and I'm just dragging a fairly dry brush now over certain areas of the water area to make little ripples in the in the paint and although you can't see it because of me and I will move it in a second but uh, the farther away the less it is and the closer you are to uh, the supposed foreground the more ripples you will get and one thing you've got to do at this stage as well is resist the idea of doing too much detail only put the bits in that are absolutely necessary because as you build up layers those details will appear anywhere so we, we can work at it but don't do too much uh, detailing because we're not at the detail part I'm just strengthening this area here where that platform is just to make it that bit darker and um, differentiate it from the uh, the water area around it so I'm going to give uh, the palette a bit of a clean because I'm going to move on to a, a different area of the painting and I'm wanting some red now so that we can do uh, certain parts of uh, the buildings in the background so I'm laying out some washy colour it, while we're in the background painting um, it needs to be very thin paint and very watered down so it's a bit of orange and a bit of red and uh, we'll see uh, just in a second that I'm going to put down some um, some white paint there and that's where the white paint comes in because one of the things I find is I can't find a very convincing uh, pinky colour that's light fast so basically I just make my own and uh, very easy uh, a bit of red and a, a blob of white and there you go you got your pink although I've not mixed it yet we'll, we'll see, and it's that Venetian kind of pink it, it's, it's not like a like a girly pink it's more like a I don't know how to explain it's it, it you can see it on screen so that, that's the kind of pink we're going for and we're gonna do the uh, background buildings so I keep mixing uh, the paint until I've got the right amount that I need and uh, the right consistency uh, the buildings the pinks uh, some of it would be like a terracotta kind of color but this is a, a kind of a, a pinky pinky red now that bit there is a shaded area at the side so it's quite strong that and when you were uh, do uh, these buildings because it's still a, an underpainting it has to be fairly transparent this because we're going to be putting other layers over the top of it so again that side there is a, a side face where the light isn't hitting it very well so your next lot uh, will be uh, this is where you can be a bit experimental and put uh, bits of weird colours in to give it interest as well although you don't want to be going too over the top but just remember that these colours will dry a lot lighter so they are the side faces of the buildings and they are going to be obviously darker so and I'm pulling some of that paint down now uh, into the reflection of the building in the water so we've got a consistency all the way through the uh, building to the far right of the painting is actually white 
but what I want to do is is create some interest in there and texture by adding a, a very light yellowy colour to it which it, it would have anyway if the sun were hitting a white surface so it, it's very very transparent that it's mostly water that but uh, just showing through that shimmer of white and uh, again just to make sure that it's not too strong and blotting some of that out So we move on to the next building, and this again is uh, has a, a yellow tint to to it, and um, but that one isn't actually yellow, uh, and neither is this one that I'm doing here. Uh, they're both going to be a pinky colour, but we'll drag some of that yellow down into the water again as a reflection and uh, now it's time to start pouring the other colours in hopefully it's it's now starting to uh, run into each other and you get some really nice colours that are blending and uh, that's why when you do it wet like that and what I'm doing there as well is the two sides of the building I'm I'm keeping away from those two because they will bleed into one another if, if they're touching while they're wet. But um, I think I deliberately actually make some of that go into it anyway. But um, we're adding that pinky colour in amongst the yellow and uh, that gives us that like vibrantly light pink and again on here uh, we'll also have a a pinky colour uh, showing that th that area is very heavily lit up and you notice how that actually touched the red and it bled in a bit that's that's fine it that's not a big problem now you don't want to be going too heavy into this so I'm going to take a, a little bit out, I'm going to blot it out a bit because it is a background area that and you don't want it to be overly dominant you want it to be obvious and you can actually see what it is but you don't want it to be uh, too strong I've moved on now to the uh, roof which is kind of a, a terracotta red but um, not that dissimilar to the uh, rest of the building but I'm going to try and make it slightly different to the building because I want it to show that it's a roof so I've put a little bit of dark area in that although I, I will um, drag a lot of that out so you're looking for a terracotta browny red really uh, for that although I don't think you can see on the video that it's that red but um, that's the first part of that roof done and again this is only blocking in really uh, we will define this a lot more and better later on uh, the roof for that one's going in now and uh, again it's it's just a matter of blocking in but uh, we'll wait until that dries and see whether we need to put another coat over it and uh, round here there's little bits of roof showing so the background's coming on nicely now and I'm going to move back into the area that's dry on the main part of the building and start blocking some of the lighter yellowy areas which will help the contrast with the bluer areas and that will give it that warm and cool uh, contrast which helps build the three dimensional space up and uh, we'll block that in so these are these are like pinky yellows that I'm putting in. it's already got a, a coat of yellow in it it's got the blue in it and it's got the pinks in it so
the um, background building to the right is uh, virtually dry now. So I'm going to drag a bit of yellow down and a, a little bit more yellow in bits of the places. Not, not everywhere, because remember, that's a white building. I'm just adding little bits of highlights and uh, we'll drag a bit of that yellow down to create the reflection of that building. And as you get farther away from the building, it's less and less intense. And uh, if you can see at the moment, I've not painted it, but there is a tower. But I'm painting that tower, uh, its colour, in at this moment in time, which is, I should have done it a bit later, but I obviously went into that and uh, blot it out a little bit and drag it across because as, as the ripples get bigger, it becomes more and more distorted, the reflection. So this is the building that I'm talking about, the tower. And uh, I don't want to be too detailed with this, to be honest with you, because it is in a fairly much in the background. So I'm just going to hint at the uh, tower itself and try and give it a bit of three dimensional space. So on the right hand side, it's going to be darker than it is on the left hand side. I won't do an awful lot of uh, detail work with this tower. I just want to make sure that you can see that it's there, but it's, it's a very backgroundy thing. And that helps actually uh, create a sense of depth, the fact that you can't see that much detail, although you can see that it's there. Now, I'm just finishing areas of the roof off of uh, one of the buildings. And uh, I will then start to create a lot more definition in certain parts of the background building by adding a stronger solution and mix of uh, paint to various areas. And that's how you create that highly defined um, area of a building without doing lots and lots of detail. So little bits of uh, detail in, in certain areas, but not going over the top with it. Uh, at the, on the roof, uh, there are little bits of uh, red areas showing. And we'll then blot out a little bit because we don't want it to be overly strong. That. So we we move on to putting a bit more darker area in and that's by putting some of that blue that we've been using. Uh, and notice that's that's the point of uh, this painting. We're using a very limited palette. We've only used about four or five colours at the most. And this creates a, a consistency in the painting. And this blue that I'm adding in will help to create the definition even more in the building which again will contribute to the three-dimensional space. So we've added that blue and I probably will add more blue uh, later to it. But areas where it's going to be quite dark, it's good to get that defined and then you know exactly where your boundaries of light and dark are. The background buildings have had plenty of time now to dry off a little bit and they're mostly dry now. So I'm, I'm getting another mix of uh, red paint and diluting that and we're going to give it another coat 
just to just to give it a little bit more strength but this time i'm being careful to only do certain areas so that we can start looking at where some windows might be and uh, adding a few bits of other color into it uh, such as the darker uh, the blue there as you can see I've, i'm making a, a like a gray kind of mixture so there's a mix of uh, cools and and lights uh, warm colors in there uh, color into the reflection as well but only to a certain extent in that local area we'll do exactly the same up here any of the darker areas we we'll just define that like directly underneath the roof there generally tends to be a an area where they are slightly darker and like i said with other buildings in in venice they have like a, a partition between each layer and that's a, a basic attempt at getting that partitioning in what you can see now So that's little bits of detailing, but that's about as much detailing as I'm going to do in that other than the windows that will go in later. I'm going to add a little bit of a bit more colour to this area. N not too much, and it's a very thin wash. So getting just picking up little bits of color that i've already mixed and just adding here and there will create uh, an interesting set of blends with the uh, colors and i'm coming back down into the, every time you do something on the, your building put some of the color into your watery reflection and it gives it that believability it, because you can produce it and it not uh, look the same colour. So what I'm doing with this part of the uh, painting is going back over certain areas that have dried a little bit light. And uh, you have to make sure that the paintings dry before you put a new glaze of layer of paint over it so that you can uh, uh, get nice layers because obviously if it's still wet it'll just blend into the other colour and then create mud so you have to be patient and that's what I'm actually doing with the painting although you are seeing it real time I'm actually stopping and letting it dry for a short period of time. I'm getting a bit more definition in the side of the um, the roof that doesn't have the light hitting it. And I'm quite happy with that roof now because it's starting to get some good tonal value there. So using darker and stronger washes, I'm looking for areas that will help me define uh, the roof uh, on this particular section and again that will help with the three-dimensional aspect of the building and as, as you get further into the painting you get darker and you get stronger paint and less washy now I've moved back onto this tower thing and I'm gonna create the so the far right side is fairly fairly dark because that's the least lit area but the next bit is not quite as dark and the other bit to the far left has almost bleached out white and that will help give that three-dimensional kind of feel 
Well, it's just, again, I'm defining that far right area just to make sure that that's absolutely clear that that's a dark area. And it's got a dome at the top of that building as well. So I'm, I'm trying also to give it a, a kind of domed kind of feel. While that's all drying in the background, I can move into the foreground detail with the gondolas. Now, like I said, there's three gondolas here. So I'm just doing the skin tones an area is where I think that the skin's going to be, uh, i.e. the face. There's a person in the boat there. There's another person who actually has a red jumper on. So I'm going to do that bit at the same time. And I'm, I'm going to concentrate on getting that the two boats in, uh, blocked in. And that gives me a little bit of time to wait for the background to dry. So the farthest away boat, to be honest with you, it's very basic. You don't really need to put too much detail in it. It's just a very dark blue uh, colour uh, to block in the boat. And because it's so far away, there's little or no detail. It's almost a, a silhouette. So the man who's, uh, do you drive a, a gondola? I don't know. Um, he's almost in the dark as a silhouette as well. And that again helps with the believability of the distance. I'm just blocking in a little bit of reflection there and nipping it out a little bit because it doesn't need to be overly strong that and that's your first gondola done really apart from odd little bit here and there which we will probably go back to later so uh, the foreground gondola that's a bit different because you can see a lot of detail on that first of all there's reflections off the boat uh, with the pink and with various other things reflecting onto the boat uh, from the water and that's been mixed in with the colour of the boat itself and I'm doing the um, reflection as well at the moment so it's a bit of pink and a bit of blue again Note how I'm not really straying away and putting overly flamboyant colours in. I'm just getting the back of the boat in at this moment in time. But we'll, we'll return back to this because it, it needs to dry before we do any more work on it. So just a, a little bit more definition on that. And... I pick up a, a little bit of uh, like a turquoise colour here, something that I had on my play, uh, on my palette, and uh, just bring that in as a bit of interest. But uh, that's that's about as much I'm straying away from the uh, colour palette that I'm all uh, already got, because we need to uh, put a little bit of variety of colour in, but not be going too over the top and that will help with the definition of the the man against the turquoise blue because that the man is uh, like a, that same blue what we've been using and uh, that's what we're doing now we're getting the gondola man in now uh, these people who drive these gondolas uh, they wear a very specific uniform some of them do anyway and it's like a, a striped uh, jersey that they wear so um, again because it's a, a key feature of the painting I am and it's fairly dry brush this and I'm doing that because I'm not going to be doing an awful lot more with that 
Uh, so I am getting the detail in at this moment on the uh, the person on the foreground because, to be frank, there's been an awful lot more to do on that. I may put a bit of tonal in there, but uh, he's got an for what he is, he's got a lot of detail, really. Uh, although he is a, an important part of the painting. So we're just getting little bits done here and I'm making a start on getting his, um, is it a punt? I don't know what they call them. The thing that they used to push the, um, the gondolas through the river. So and that itself will have a, a reflection that goes back to the boat. Uh, I'm not making a big deal about that. I'm just kind of giving a, an idea that that's what that is. Because it, it's a loose painting, this. And we're not bothered about absolutely strong detail. So re-emphasising that punt, or whatever they call it. And uh, that's this guy almost done, really. Now the background buildings are dry, I can start putting certain parts of detail in and we're really getting to the end of the background painting. There may be other bits to do once uh, I've done this area, but I've, I've got a, a darkish blue wash uh, with a bit of brown in it, a, a bit of red and... I don't use black at... Uh, with with uh, this, although they are dark, and I'm looking for the windows that I plotted out earlier in the drawing, and I'm just going to start adding those bits in, and literally they're just basic strokes. You, you do not need to be doing loads of detail. Now you might think, oh, that's a bit strong, but uh, they will dry a little bit lighter obviously. We're getting uh, the uh, detail working, continuing with doing those windows and for that part of the building at the moment that will virtually be done but uh, I may go in with little bits of shadowing later on and uh, we'll move on to the next bit of the building. We've gone back to the roof now and I'm just getting some of that colour and using that to define parts of the build at uh, the roof again and uh, just tiny little bits uh, because you don't want to overdo it with the detailing uh, in a background area. I'm going to pick up some more of that blue and I'm going to do some more of these windows. Obviously there's quite a few windows. That's that's what makes Venice, Venice. All those windows on the building. They've got so many windows in the building, it's unbelievable. But then again, that's a part of the decorativeness of, of Venice. So we have to try to depict some of that. Now it's up to you how many windows you actually put in, whether you're going to be absolutely every window. But uh, you can put in as many as you feel is right. Moving on to the next building, these windows are very thin slivers rather than what I've been doing before. Maybe they're smaller, it's a smaller building. And uh, it, it, it may have thinner windows uh, so these are all they are is a brush stroke whereas the other ones have been squares that are blocked in and by doing that you can actually create variation and stop it from being boring uh, they do have um, little bits of decorative areas on them as well 
So I'm getting those in as well to define certain areas. And again, it's it's just making definition. And we've got the one that's on the far right on the building. Again, that's just basic bits of line work. So we're getting uh, the windows in here. And again, the, the tiny little things are not, I mean, they're just blobs. And I won't be too precise about it either. And at, at, on this stage, you can maybe put a teeny weeny bit of detail on the larger windows. Like I put a line across the top of them. Now, th this, this particular building, as some sort of veranda on it or something that uh, some decorative thing that you can just about see and I am going to put that in because it it's the nearest far building and that again emphasizes the fact that it's far away but it's got some detail in it we continue on and Really, it's it's fairly dry brushwork. This that it's it should have strong uh, thick paint that's dry and not wet, um, and we're just blocking in little bits of detail now, because uh, that's a we're not really that far off finishing the uh, areas uh, of the background buildings, and. Be careful not to go too far with the detailing because you you can completely ruin the feel of it by putting too much detail in. Just imply certain details and uh, that will work great. And sometimes that detail work can just be washed out a little bit and it doesn't have to be absolutely 100% precise. So, the building to the far right has some sort of uh, jetty area where boats obviously will uh, launch from. And uh, there seems to be a slightly darkened alcove area uh, I'm, I'm not going to overemphasize it but I am going to put some strokes in to em uh, identify the fact that yeah it, it's kind of in a slight alcove so we will be putting other details in as well around there so you can not be overly detailed with it background little or no detail and then that gives you regal room for when you're doing your foreground work so fairly dry still and like I said earlier uh, they have jetties that uh, have poles sticking up and bits of wood and all sorts of things it's the kind of thing you come to expect to see in uh, Venice. And I'm just trying to do that. In fact, there I've put a boat just to show that that's like a jetty. And then underneath it, it's got a, a, a slight reflection. It's on a very small boat, that. So uh, we'll continue with putting all these little bits of wood and jetty in. And uh, we'll do a couple of layers of that. And, and then it gives it a sense of depth. So getting those bits of detailing in. I'll, I'll return back to it once it's dry. And maybe put a final wash over certain areas that I think may need it. But really that's the, um, the background almost all done. But I won't return back to that until it's time to do a, until it's dry and, and we need to do a final little wash over the rest of the painting. So 
some of the building is creating a, a darker area in this and almost a shadow reflection if you want to call it that but uh, I've put a bit of darker pink red there and it's creating a, a purpley area that helps define that area as a fairly dark part of the painting although I still will need to work on that a little bit right we're moving on to the uh, main building again and we're gonna start getting some more uh, detailed areas although we are still being quite loose at this stage with this part of the building there's no real detail in this and it's a fairly dry uh, part of it we're not uh, doing any wet in wet work it's it's just the wet paint onto a dry surface at this stage and it's a fairly strong mixture as well uh, because we're, we're getting kind of detail but not in a, a a very bold way we're, we're trying to create that detail without it being overly formal and in your face so at this stage of it we're we're still working in a relatively loose manner so getting some of the uh, detailed uh, ornamental uh, facading which uh, a lot of these buildings have they have laurel leaves and and plaques and things like that that uh, old buildings uh, are quite well known for and uh, we're doing that but we're not putting super detail in the the idea of this painting is not to be extremely detailed because if you do that you'll create a lack of balance in the painting so we will create detail without doing detail and we've picked up some blue now and um, we're going to re-emphasize some of the darker areas of the painting due to the archway in the windows facing away from the light source that will be a lot darker so we're going to put some more dark in there and we'll be build that up in layers uh, so that you can see that that is obviously an archway um, we have to do this bit by bit uh, let it dry put another layer in let it dry you can't just put it all in one color and that's it because it'll just all go into one color so again we're, we're getting the shaded detail in and that will have a, a particular direction that it will point and uh, building up these layers bit by bit making sure that we're not painting wet onto wet because that has no value at this stage we're trying to paint dry layers on top of one another so I have to be careful about where I'm painting because it can quickly muddy up the painting and more and more we're creating definition in the painting at that side uh, while still trying to keep it fresh although remember this area is not in the light as strongly as what the other areas are so it will be dark and I'm doing that part of the jetty now and that again will have its own shaded area and then the bit that goes into the water and a, a little bit that uh, reflects uh, re-emphasizing that and as you can see as I get closer to the end of the painting I'm getting a lot more defined I'm doing a lot more detail and I'm doing it in paint that's a lot stronger 
they're, they're not as washed out the paints now they're mostly paint and not an awful lot of water and that's that's how you get to this stage but you don't use an awful lot of this paint in this way because you'll ruin all the hard work that you've already done for it and again now it's uh, on that side of the near building uh, it, it's basically dry now because we're painting with fairly dry paints it will it, it will dry a lot quicker now so I'm getting some more dark areas in and the reason being that although it's a light building the light this is the side of the building that's not getting as much light so from the left hand side it's going to be darker right till you get to the right hand side now that might leak a little bit of light around the edges of it so I'm going to leave that as light as I possibly can uh, without it being too obvious that it's like that so that's what we're doing now we're getting some more darker areas in uh, now that it's had a chance to dry and I'm, I'm getting the dark bits because the building uh, the windows have uh, that'll be dark inside the the window area will be fairly dark and that's all I'm going to do with those windows I'm not really going to be hyper detailed with it as an example we've got these arched windows here and this this actually should be the darkest part of the painting really uh, if you were to pull anything out to say yeah that's the dark bit because that's inside the building uh, and uh, we'll do that with all three windows and uh, it may need one or two coats like that so again your next one will uh, and again this is not detailed work just blocking areas in and I'm not, I'm not being overly faffy about what details exist, what don't. I'm just really just blocking in colour. We have this last window here. And uh, these really should be the areas of the painting where you're working almost virtually dry with very, very strong colours. I'm getting some more detail in the building with that same blue just to give it the idea that it's got some type of decoration on the building and uh, we're not really that far away from completion of the painting there will be various little bits to do we've still got the boat in the far bottom corner to do so we'll, we'll move on to that shortly so here's uh, Ooh, I'm picking blue up again and uh, there we are we're, we're blocking in that that foreground boat or gondola if you want to call it a gondola which it is uh, and I don't want to put too much emphasis on this because although it brings interest to the painting compositionally it's a bit risky because it's going out of the painting and it could bring your eye out of the painting so I'm not putting too much it's almost as though I'm wanting you to focus your attention on the gondola in the center which is the main feature of the painting but this is just to show that there is a gondola there I could have left that out but it might have created a boring space uh, in the painting so I've left it in so I'm now going back over certain areas that I want to define on that middle gondola uh, just to create a bit more strength in definition in, in certain areas uh, which will help the painting
So I'm, I'm, I'm going around a little bit with that same blue. We, we've stuck to a very limited palette throughout the painting and uh, it's helping us with uh, keeping the painting all consistent as one group of a painting. Another interesting feature of Venice is the poles that stick out of the water. I'm not sure what they exactly are for, but they're, they're like red poles with white stripes. And uh, here's one of them that I'm doing now. And again, that just adds to the narrative of the fact that it's Venice. I mean, obviously, uh, gondolas uh, will tell you for a fact that they are. But I'm, I'm just, again, creating some more strength of uh, depth of darkness in that platform round it so that you can tell that it's definitely something separate from the water and really all it is now is bits of finishing work uh, strengthening dark areas but we really don't want to be putting too much emphasis on that because you can overburden the painting with dark areas uh, a little bit more on the uh, waviness of the water around there and that should be almost complete yeah and really this is this is the almost just touches of finesse now really in the painting you may not necessarily see very well uh, on video these little ripply bits but um in the painting they do matter and obviously around that bit where i've just been painting where the punt is going it's going to ripple a lot more so final touches uh, in the foreground let it fade off in the background because you don't want big bits of detail there and we're literally at the end of the painting so that i think is it done i think so this is the end painting set against the original reference image and as you can see there are differences in how i drew it out i, I deliberately moved certain things but in essence what i've done is i put a a block background of colours into the entirety of the painting and then added focused areas of colour uh, where needed and that's really the trick of this particular painting but I hope that this has been instructional for you and uh, you come back again and watch another one of my videos when they get produced so thank you like and subscribe Bye.